Hello and welcome to this tutorial about Microsoft Defender for Identity. In this tutorial, I will talk about what Microsoft Defender Identity is and what are its key capabilities. Then I will talk about the licensing requirements for Microsoft Defender Identity and the privacy of users data. My name is Navneet Kumar. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and the founder of TrainCrest Technologies. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe that so that you get the notification of my latest videos. Learning objectives of this tutorial are Module 1 that is the overview of Microsoft Defender for Identity in which I will talk about what Microsoft Defender for Identity is and the key capabilities of the Microsoft Defender for Identity. Followed by understanding Microsoft Defender by identity for identity licensing and privacy requirements. Microsoft Defender for Identity is a cloud-based service that keeps a close eye on the network to make sure that no one is trying to break in using fake user accounts. This helps the organizations monitoring and protecting user identities across their network. In this diagram, you see that the Defender for Identity is a safety net on different identity solutions you have deployed in Microsoft Cloud, be it Microsoft Entra ID or on-premises services like ADDS, Domain Service or the Federation Service or Certificate Service, where there is an agent called MDI Sensor that is deployed and it collects and sends this data to the cloud service or third-party identity providers. Overall, all this data from various sources is collected and sent to the Microsoft Defender for Identity Cloud service that analyzes this data and detects any incidents based on the defined policies. And then you can remediate by responding to these incidents or investigating them. MDI can help prevent from security breaches by providing the features like identity security posture assessments, real-time monitoring, investigation and threat hunting, and incident response. If I talk about identity security posture assessment, the MDI can identify the weaknesses in the security configuration that could be exploited by the attackers. This helps in reducing the attack surface by proactively uh, configuring the identities or the uh, identity infrastructure in a way that it reduces the attack surface. Real-time monitoring, MDI continuously monitors the user's activities and detects any anomalies that could signal a threat. In investigation and threat hunting, the MDI provides the tools to provide the investigation of suspicious activities and proactively hunting for potential threats. Finally, in incident response, the MDI can help you responding to the security incidents involving compromised identities by providing data and insights for faster mitigation. Talking about each component in details, identity security posture assessment includes multiple steps. Number one is data collection. This data is collected using MDI sensors that are deployed on the domain controllers or EDFS or certificate servers and this data is sent regularly to the service. Number two is analysis and detection. Once this data is collected, then it is analyzed against known vulnerabilities and any misconfigurations. MDI looks for weaknesses in the areas like user accounts for weak passwords, privileged accounts with unnecessary access or dormant accounts that could be exploited. Group policies which allow the groups, the excessive access. Active Directory configurations. There might be misconfigurations or improper settings that could allow attackers to manipulate user accounts or escalate the privileges. In terms of certificate services, if the sensor is deployed on the certificate server, then it can check for the misconfigured certificate templates, allowing unauthorized certificate access or overly permissive key usage. If I talk about reporting and remediation, the third capability of this posture assessment, 
MDI can translate the identified weaknesses into the actionable alerts and these reports detail about the specific vulnerabilities or misconfigurations that have been found, potential impact on your security posture if it is exploited, recommended actions to remediate the issues and improve your security posture. Finally, continuous monitoring. The MDI assessment is not a one-time event. As I mentioned that the MDI continuously assesses or collects the data. It is a continuous process. It will continuously update as the new data is collected and analyzed. This ensures you have the most recent picture of your identity security posture. Talking about the real-time monitoring, the first step is the data collection through the MDI sensors. This data has been collected from different sources and this data is including the user login attempts, be it successful or failure attempts, any password changes, privileged account activities being performed like accessing sensitive data, network resource access attempts or lateral movement attempts being done, for an instance, uh, accessing resources from unusual location. Baseline creations is the next step in this. In baseline creation, the MDI establishes a baseline for typical user behaviors based on the historical data. This baseline creation or uh, define, defining this baseline considers the different factors like normal login times and the locations for each user, frequently accessed resources by each user or typical network activity patterns of each user or anomaly detection is the next step that is used in this real-time monitoring where the MDI continuously analyzes user activities in real time and then it compares them against the uh, established baseline that have been defined based on the historical data of these users. It uses a combination of uh, techniques to identify these anomalies like Static, statistical analysis, heuristics, machine learning. Finally, we have alerting. When MDI detects a suspicious activity that deviate from the baseline, it generates an alert for the security teams. These alerts include details about the activity, the user involved in this and the potential risk level. Based on these alerts, the incidents can be generated. Next is investigation and threat hunting. If I talk about investigation, so we have different things that we can do under the investigation. Like we can go for detailed activity view. MDI provides a comprehensive view of users activity, including the login attempts, password changes, resource access or lateral movement attempts. This allows analytics or anal this analytics of this uh, uh, data allows the security analysts to trace a user's action and identify potential red flags. Then we have entity relationship mapping. This entity relationship mapping helps visualizing the connections between users, devices or the resources. This can reveal the suspicious relationships that might indicate compromised accounts or coordinated attacks. Next is customizable timelines. So security analysts can create custom timelines to visualize user activities over a specific period of time that gives them a picture of the activities that users perform in a particular time frame. This helps identify trends or any pinpoints the exact moment a suspicious activity has occurred. Next is forensic analysis. MDI offers forensic capabilities to delve deeper into the suspicious activities. Analysts can analyze network logs and the other data to understand the root cause and the scope of potential threats. Talking about the threat hunting, this is the process of hunting for the undetected threats. We have different uh, uh, components of it like pre-built hunting queries that we can use. We have predefined queries. MDI comes with pre-built queries based on known attack techniques. 
and these queries allow analysts to search for specific indicators of compromises. Next is custom query creation. You can create your own queries and this enables proactively hunting of potential threads that might not be covered by the pre-built queries. Next is lateral movement path. In this, the MDI can identify the potential lateral movement paths within your network. These are the routes attackers uh, might use to move between the compromised accounts and escalate the privileges. Finally, security score integration. MDI integrates with Microsoft security score, which provides a security posture assessment score. This helps prioritizing the investigation and threat hunting efforts based on areas with the highest risk. Talking about incident response, we can respond to the incidents that have been detected. We have rapid threat identification, number one. MDI's real-time monitoring can detect suspicious activities like anomalous login attempts or privileged account misuse. This immediate identification allows for faster response, potentially stopping an attack in its early stages. Next is comprehensive forensics data. MDI provides detailed forensic data on the compromised accounts activities. This includes the information on login attempts, whether it is successful or failed attempts, accessed resources, interactions with other potential compromised accounts. Then we have automated containment measures. MDI can be configured to initiate automated containment actions upon detecting a high risk activity. These actions can include the disabling compromised accounts to prevent further access or isolating infected device to limit lateral movement or blocking access to the critical resources. We can perform such operations. These automated responses can significantly reduce the damage caused by the compromised identities and buy time for security teams to investigate and implement further mitigation strategies. Talking about incident response workflows integration, MDI can integrate with security integration and event management tools, the SIEM tools. This allows for seamless information sharing between the MDI and other security tools facilitating a coordinated response effort across different teams. Let us talk about the Microsoft Defender for identity licensing and privacy. First of all, let's talk about the licensing. Microsoft Defender for Identity is not sold as a standard product. Remember, you will have this service included in many different type of licenses. For an instance, you can use Enterprise Mobility plus Security, E5, EMS E5 or A5 license. This is included in that. Microsoft 365 E5, E5, A5 or G5 license. Specific Microsoft 365 E5 SKUs are there for security or Microsoft 365 F5 security plus compliance also includes this. As I mentioned that it is not sold as a standard product. If I talk about the E5 or A5, this is a comprehensive security suite that offers MDI along with the range of other security features like mobile device management and the cloud app security, the CASB solution. So we get the Defender for Identity automatically with E5. Talking about the Microsoft 365 E5 or A5 or G5, this tier of Microsoft 365 includes the MDI as part of its advanced security feature along with the functionalities like endpoint protection and the information protection. Talking about the third one, which is Microsoft uh, uh, 365 E5 SKU, specific SKU for security uh, reasons. So we can use this with some variations of Microsoft 365 E5 that is having a focus on security. Then we have finally Microsoft 365 F5 Security Plus 
compliance this is an advanced security and compliance offering that provides the mdi alongside with other features for data loss prevention and the information governance purpose before i jump into the privacy let me show you that this service is already included if you have any of these licenses i take you to this entra portal where i take you to the identity and under the identity i scroll it down to go to the billing under that i go to the licenses and i see all the products that i have available over here here i will show you this e5 license under this i will have the list of the licensed users and the licensed groups if i look for the service plan details what i have uh, received with this i am looking for defender for identity you will notice that defender for identity is included as part of this e5 plan so we need to ensure that we use the eligible plan for using this microsoft defender for identity service after this if i talk about the privacy of the data that has been collected from the tenants identity infrastructure the data that is collected is retained for 180 days and is automatically erased that cannot be retrieved back talking about the security of the data that is stored in the cloud so the data at rest is encrypted also note that you have control over the user accounts that mdi can monitor you can decide the identities later on we will configure those identities that we want to monitor through the defender for identity also not all user accounts need to be synchronized with entra id for mdi to provide security values well the key takeaways of this module are that microsoft defender for identity is a cloud service that you can use to monitor track detect analyze and respond to the identity related incidents in your network it has many key capabilities that it can collect the data it can analyze that you can do the threat hunting to proactively th uh, hunt that uh, uh, undetected threats you can define the security baselines it can use the machine learning and the heuristics to create that baseline if any uh, event that shows the deviation from that baseline can be resulted into the alerts and the security teams can be notified for that the security teams can investigate and then can respond to these incidents finally for using this product we do not have a standard license available it is part of other uh, suites of products and it comes with those licenses like we have seen e5 or a5 or f5 licenses for security and compliance this is not sold as a standard product the data that has been collected from your network is stored securely the data has been encrypted at rest and is stored for 180 days you also control that which users you want to monitor through the microsoft defender for identity i hope this tutorial was informative to you thanks for watching and do subscribe my channel for more videos thank you